Welcome to Manipur. Sir, welcome to Manipur. Welcome to Manipur. So welcome to Manipur.
So what are you doing? We have to go and we get more. No, no. I don't know, yeah. So where is
igual, igual. Más o menos al lado. Más o menos aquí que no es un solo. Hi, hi.
ai pai bi ore som pai le ra ba khana na la so ra ma pai lai i ti da da ge ko na u u dre khang dro ko ni da ko to ta ko ko ge
to the land of largest women market in Asia or India. Ladies and gentlemen, our greatly our B20 India Secretariat, Ministry of and Confederation of Indian Industry, to our B20 meetings in the northeast region of India, well endowed with the bounties and beauty of nature and vibrant, talented and well-educated population whom you would have met in not only other parts of India, but also abroad. In light of India's ACUS policy, North East India happens to be the gateway of India to Southeast Asia. States Commissioner, member of CA in Artist Council, Excellencies, Diplomatic Corps, delegates and participants, good afternoon to everyone. As a lot of time has been lost, I'll keep it very brief. I thought I will give you good brief about G life which is life for lifestyle for environment so this is the most high profile international endeavor ever which india has undertaken so far g20 summit which is scheduled in new delhi in the early uh, september we'll see the largest gathering of all the world g20 leaders so in addition to the usual g20 countries this time we invited nine uh, more countries as uh, invited countries in addition to that we invited 14 international organizations including isa and cdra which are headquarters in new delhi so total we are 42 uh, delegates which we, which which is being participated all across meetings in india so the idea g20 secretary and the, what is happening in g20 is to create a unique pan indian flavor 
and the Indian experience for all the delegates will be coming to the G20 meetings. So you would already witness the warmth and the welcome which is state of Manipur has already extended to you all across the roads, dance festivals, making it as a uh, warm atmosphere. So that is that experience which you will never get when you come here maybe next time. So it will be a different experience. So that's what we say that whenever there is a G20 invitation, please make it a point, please go and attend. But that experience nobody can create it. It's a unique. Everybody is involved from the top leadership of the state. So please don't regret any invitation for any G20. So it's an opportunity for all the participating delegation as I explained that the experience of the amazing diversity which we have, inclusive traditions which we have in plenty and the cultural richness. It's not only business, yes, more towards that. We have, uh, of course, you will focus more on business but take some time to appreciate the diversity and culture too. Throughout the year, we will be hosting foreign delegates over 200 meetings in 56 locations all across India, covering all the states and UT, union territories. So in this part of region, we are already done two, two meetings in Gohati and this is a third meeting in Imphal. In coming two, three months, we will have several of meetings in all the states in northeastern uh, states and we will be going to all the union territories. By the end of September, we will be completing all the, covering all the states and UTs. So this engagement group, uh, which is conducted by the CIA, will bring across all the sectors from academia, business and others. So I wish all the success for CIA. Thanks for CIA to accept to host meetings in Northeast and I wish them all the best. Thank you. Chief Minister of Manipur, northeast corner of India, we call it Jewel of India. And Manipur is a place you must have seen and appreciated the moment you landed at the airport and came out and saw the hospitality extended by the people who were in their traditional costumes and showing the vivid culture of the state. This session has been delayed and I'm not going to take much time because I have a chance to speak about business opportunities in the plenary session, but what I want to say, our state has come out full. <laughs> Namaste. Sri N. Biran Singh Ji. Third is the new turning point of the Second World War. With this background, I again welcome all the distinguished delegates. I thank CII and G20 Secretary for the economic growth and now rank as the world fifth largest economy by the GDP. In recent years, the government of India accelerated the ambitious reform process. This aim to foster enabling environment for multilateral business partnership. The government has implemented production link initiative scheme worth US dollar 26 billion across 14 important sectors, including information technology, mobile and electronic medical devices, artificial intelligence, semiconductors, pharmaceutical and green energy. Looking towards the Northeast, we have a youth population as well in skilling, experience in communicating friendly, fluently in English with client without any hassle. This must be leveraged by our business community in employing these skilled individuals across the sectors. Friend, Northeastern region has the diverse potentials to propel Atmanirbhar Bharat self-reliance India, being the engine of growth. Our sacred river Brahmaputra and the Barak and its tributaries and riverine agri-ecosystem promote the cultivation of cash crop, medicinal herb, and horticultural products including wide variety of exotic fruits, flower, high value species, and numerous species of medicinal and aromatic plant, as well as exotic fishes offer you opportunity for hospitality, tourism, and medical value travels. 
the availability of exportable resources coupled with local advantage of being the point to connect between South Asia and Southeast Asia offers the opportunity of medical tourism through Ayurvedic and traditional medical treatment transforming Northeast India into successful international friends. The business community of Northeast and Manipur in particular is eager to showcase its business potentials. Manipuris have originally developed, made a mark and created a brand value for themselves in the hospitality and caregiving sectors. These sectors need to be pushed for international partnership now to enable our youths to reap their full potentials. Infant has a population with huge skill advantage, which is in artistic and creative by nature. This has formed expression in their handloom and handicraft products, which are world famous for their design, ingenuity, colorfulness, and usefulness. One of the special features of the industry is that women are majority of loin loom weaving. On the other hand, the tribes of Andro, Tongjiao, and Nungbi have mastered the skill of pottery over the centuries and that too without use of water wheels. Trifax schemes under Ministry of Tribal Affairs has initiated marketing and logistic intervention for enhancing tribal entrepreneurship in the regions to increase the income, generate livelihood for the tribal community. One district, one product scheme is also helping in the district in northeastern India to reach their full potential and create employment opportunity, especially in rural areas. Ministry of External Affairs, via its mission and post in all countries abroad, is working closely with DPIIT to acquire this private and ODOP product for gifting purpose and provide opportunity in remote area across India. The objective is to increase export of the Northeastern products to fall and contribute effectively to the Atmanirbhar Bharat and the vocal for local by tribal initiative, friends and business community Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji is committed to proactive government policy. North is, is dear to his heart. No other Prime Minister in this country has been committed like him in his vision to take governance and service delivery to the last mile and persons. It was the Honorable Prime Minister's desire that Minister from his government should regularly visit Northeast to know and understand their issues and sure delivery of government services in the regions. We are also quite proud of our sporting prizes and achievement. I am sure that business community of my state and the Northeast look forward to enhancing partnership in sectors like tourism, hospitality, healthcare and handloom, etc. immensely. Delegates, Northeastern region of India is blessed with scenic natural beauty, rich biodiversity, rare wildlife and warm welcoming people. The region offers unforgettable visit for tourists interested in wildlife and ethnic tourism along with the mountaineering, trekking, and adventure tourism. I am confident that the connectivity projects in Northeastern will boost the tourism and people-to-people -people connect in this region. 
international partnership will help our youth immensely to realize their full potential. Our businesses are ready to grab the opportunity of international partnership. I am assured, I assure you all and STEAM delegates to extend all possible help from my ministry, that is the Ministry of External Affairs. Thank you for present here. Thank you. Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur, Shri N. Bairen Singh Ji, my colleague, in considering the whole shaped valley at the center, a naturally made jewel, I am overjoyed to see our friends from business community joining us here today. The G20 group of nations represent around 85% of the global GDP, over 75% of global trade, and two-thirds of the world population. Following the presidency of Indonesia, India assumed the presidency of G20 on 1st December 2022. The G20, as you all know, is one of the most important economic forums in the world today. At this year, in 2023, India is the presidency of the G20 in the world of the honor Chief Prime Minister Shri Nandar Bhai Modi ji, we will make sure this presidency is inclusive, ambitious, decisive, and action oriented. The B20, which is a group of businesses, has been a prominent part of the G20 since its creation in 2010. It brings together the businesses community to present recommendations to the G20 governments. The G20 benefits from the extensive discussions and studies conducted by engagement groups comprising of representatives of the private sector, civil society, and independent bodies. The G20 was established in 1999 after the Asian financial crisis and its role as a crisis manager was confirmed in 2008 during the global financial crisis. India's assumption of the G20 presidency at a crucial time when the world is facing multiple challenges is significant. During India's presidency, the discussions and certain actions will bring positive change to the world. As the world endeavors to pay the way towards global economic recovery, it is utmost important to acknowledge that the success of the recovery will largely depend on the actions of the businesses. The G20 must provide a crucial forum for businesses to convene and collectively address key global issues and concerns and well policy recommendations during the Indian presidency. India has a unique opportunity to share the future of global trade and commerce in the way that benefits not just our country, economy, but the economies of other nations as well. The government recognizes the need of businesses and is a rival partner for their success. India has best position to play a leading role in this effort. We have a large and growing, growing economy, a highly skilled workforce, and a rich cultural heritage that can serve as a bridge between different nations and cultures. We also have a strong commitment to sustain sustainable development. B20 India has scheduled program in northeast regions of India, including Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Sikkim, 
to showcase investment potential and opportunities for business partnership in industry sectors where these states have core strength. The Northeast region, comprising of eight states, plays a strategic role in the nation's growth and is rich in culture, diversity, and heritage. Manipur is a prime location with a vibrant culture. The Northeast region of India places abundant natural resources and including potential are 50,000 megawatt of hydroelectric hydro power and 12 of fossil fuels. The states of Northeast region are now turning a new page of history. Highest priority is be, being given to development of Northeast. The government of India is giving a special focus to the Northeast region. All central government departments are required to allocate 10% of their budget for, the, for this region and the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region has been established to coordinate development efforts of, of this area. Efforts are, have been made to improve infrastructure in the region including interstate, intrastate and cross borders. Manipur in guys a distinct place amongst the handloom zones in India. One of the special features of the industry is that women are the major viewers. Most of the viewers are famous for their skill and intricate designing in respect of fine silk items, tribal shawls used in various fabrics. Fabrics and shawls of Manipura are in great demand in the national and international market. With a view to attract investment, boost employment generation and position itself strongly in the global market, textile market, government has approved production link to center scheme for textile and, and Pradhan Mantri mega international te textile region and uh, apron scheme which have potential to generate large scale employment in the in the sector investment to the tune of rupees 1536 crores made so far under the PLA scheme which is a one very successful scheme and creating employment and making India network. In addition to the government is implementing various schemes for promotion and development of textiles and headroom sectors pan India basis. The government has approved setting up of seven PM Mitra parks to develop world class infrastructure including plug and play facilities with an outlay of four thousand four hundred forty five crores for a period of up to twenty twenty seven twenty eight. Government of India has made significant efforts to improve the health care and medical sector in the region in the recent years with a range of initiatives focused on enhancing accessibility and affordability of quality health care. One of the most significant initiatives by the Union Government is Aishman Bharat program which includes health and wellness centers and the Pradhan Mantri Chandra Rokya Yojana Health Insurance Scheme. The initiative for the Northeast region announced in the Union Budget 2023 was an initial allocation of 1,500 crores aims to restore dedicated services to managing cancer in this area. Contributing over 13% of India's GDP, the ICT sector and the digital economy are major economic drivers for this, the country. India aims to grow the ICT sector for 1 trillion by 2025 or 20% 20 of the GDP. I can only say that what we are seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. Your potential is enormous. Your capabilities are great than what you can see. Today, we are we need to think like a startup 
constant, constantly focus on new and better ideas and strive to spread them across the country to improve efficiency, effectiveness, productivity and transparency and the integrity of the system and addresses. We must work together with other countries to build a more inclusive, fair and sustainable global economy. I extend my warm personal welcome to all of you at this important meeting. I hope to see you in all the upcoming meetings of P20 and bring out value of recommendation for the Leaders Summit. Thank you very much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Very good evening to, to all of you. Uh, Dr. R.K. Ranjan Singh, Honorable Minister of State for SNL. Our strengths and opportunities for multilateral business partnership in various sectors in the backdrop of our real cultural heritage. All the foreign delegates have already uh, enjoyed the scenic beauty, greenery, and uh, neat in a clean air and uh, good weather here in the state of Manipur. In line with the themes of Basudavia Kutumobakkam, means our Honorable Prime Minister's motto, One Earth, One Family, One Future. B20 Conference will serve policies towards sustainable growth and development while ensuring in peace and progress. Manipur, with a population of 2.72 million and an area of over 22,300 square kilometers, is the land of gateway of India to Southeast Asia. My state is the perfect setting for implementing India's agri policy. It is the bridge between Southeast Asia and India. Friends, to unlock the untapped opportunities in the state and in the region, center and the state are working together as double engine of growth for putting in place robust physical and social infrastructures. Most of the delegates, foreign delegates, might have not known that the features of the Northeast India. Before coming, the present Prime Minister, Narendra Modi as a Prime Minister, before 2014, the Nordis, entire Nordis region was known as part of a dark region in the country. But after the ever leadership, Narendra Modi has taken over as the PM, the drastic changes in development has taken place in the entire Nordis, including Manipur. Road infrastructure is of top priority for, of, for us. You will be happy to know that road travel from Manipur to Bangkok within 16 to 18 hours will be possible soon. Once the streets of SN Highway within Myanmar get completed, the portion from Imphal to More, our border town bordering Myanmar, <laughs> is now complete. An elevated highway across Imphal city bypassing the city's heavy traffic is also under advanced stage of consideration. Several other roads in the state are at various stages of construction. Friends, Nordic region has taken off as India's fastest growing region as I mentioned earlier for air travel too. Imphal International Airport is the third busiest airport in the region. Plans are afoot to start international flight from Imphal to Mandalay in Myanmar and Bangkok to Thailand. Helicopter services in the state are providing fast and reliable air connectivity to Moray, Jiribam, and Tamenglong and other remote part of the state. Five more helipads are coming up 
which will bring our remote corner of Thalon and Apartment closure soon. Imphal Airport will soon have a new integrated terminal and an air cargo terminal. Train service will reach Imphal City by next year. The 141 meter high Noni Bridge, a part of these rail lines, will be world's highest railway pier bridge. A feasibility survey has been conducted to extend the rail line further from Imphal to Mori, connecting Myanmar. It will provide opportunities in the logistics sector, generating employment and the business opportunities. The state also enjoys reliable and quality 24 by 7 power supply. To improve the quality, reliability of and affordability of power supply, project for implementation of revamped distribution sector scheme is being taken up. To achieve self reliance in power generation, Preparation of DPR is under process for 29 hydro projects, meaning. Friends, you will be happy to know that Manipur has been recognized as the most improved small state in overall category for three years in a row in the state of the state survey by the India Today. <laughs> Friends, this has been facilitated by improved security scenario, bans and blockade are a things of the past now. 34 police outposts along indo myanmar international border and the six police outposts along national highway 37 are coming up to strengthen border security and the management and integrated check post at Moray has also been commissioned. You see friends, we are having unguarded 390 kilometers with the Myanmar. So because of this, where sometimes we do face uh, some illegal smugglings, insurgency like that. But now we have already constructed more than 34 police outposts on border and it has totally sealed from every unwanted elements. To promote investment in the state, new industrial and investment promotion policy of Manipuras has been adopted. State government is also considering setting up an investment promotion agency to facilitate, to facilitate investment, to promote ease of doing business. The Manipur Industrial Single Window Clearance 8, 2021 was announced. Given the importance of logistics, the Manipur Integrated Logistics Policy 2022 was notified to provide adequate land for developmental needs. For investors, government also improved, approved setting up of a land bank. Industrial states in Manipur are being made available on lease. Lease rule to regulate use of government land for projects in the partnership have been framed. Under Manipur public procurement policy, we are giving preference to products made in Manipur for government processes. Multilateral funding agencies are now coming forward to fund major projects in the state. Presently, four externally added projects are under implementation in Manipur. There are in areas of water supply, road connectivity, dam rehabilitation, and community-based forest management. Involving a total project cost about 600 million US dollar. Another seven projects are being taken up with a funding from multilateral bank for a total project cost of 1 billion US dollar in the areas of road infrastructure, restoration and the rejuvenation of water bodies, watershed development, ecotourism, shareholders and the ITSZ, Information Technology Special Economic Zone. Friends, I am hopeful that deliberation today's Related to healthcare, tourism, ICT means information and other communication technology, and handlooms will further stimulate the growth and the development momentum in Manipur. Manipur has a strong base of qualified healthcare professionals and specialists. Nurses from Manipur are in high demand across India and even globally. 
our health institutes, not only Carter, to patients from neighboring states, but also from the neighboring Myanmar, presenting attractive investment opportunities in the area of medical tourism. A cancer institute has been set up in Manipur in partnership between Babina Special Lady Hospital and the American Oncology Institute. Another cancer institute is being set up by Karkinos Healthcare, uh, which is a government. A second state medical college at Georgetown has been started, and its first academic session has been started. Manipur has huge tourism potential in the form of our rich cultural, historical, and uh, cultural heritage. We get all over the world. Today, we host international men's and women's polo tournament every year on the world's oldest living polo ground at Mapal Ganzigo. To mark this significance, the margin polo complex with the world's tallest statue uh, height is around 122 feet above the hilltops of Sakul Ganze was restored and recently inaugurated by the Honorable Union Home Minister Amit Chaji. <laughs> Tomorrow, you, everyone will, you can see it and enjoy the scenic beauty. Manipur also has close historical association with both Britain and Japan. As the Battle of Imphal, voted as Britain's greatest battle was fought here in this soil. Between Great Britain on one side and Japan and the Indian National Army on the other. The Commonwealth War Cemetery, the India Peace Memorial constructed by Japanese and the INA headquarters complex with one of the country's highest national flag and memorials to remember the sacrifice made in the war. Manipur also has a strong sporting culture and offers scope for investment. Despite a sport population of 2.27 million, my state has produced numerous successful sports person, including 19 Olympians. <laughs> An Olympian park has been opened to public recently to honor our Olympian and a sports person erecting their statue inside the auditorium. Manipur also offers huge opportunities for partnership in cultural tourism. Manipuri Ras Lila is world famous. Sangritana ritual singing, drumming and dancing of Manipur was inscribed on the reprintive list of the UNESCO. Intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The city city community temple in Imphal is the most popular pilgrim center of the Vaishnavite, the Hindus in the state. Our indigenous Sanamahi religion is also an important element of our collective identity. The Kangla Palace stands today reminding us about the 2000 years of history, with more than 35 communities and tribes inhabiting their state. The state of in rich of folk arts, dance, and a song, which become most visible in our tourism festival, such as the Sanai Festival. The Festival of Oneness, the Siroi Lili Festival, the Bara Festival, and in the numerous community celebrations around the year. Every year we celebrate Manipur Sangai Festival in the month of November for 10 days. Every edition of the festival welcomes national leaders, policy makers, industry experts, business delegates, cultural performers, and exhibitors from countries across Asia and other countries and other continent. Foreign buyer delegates from over 19 countries, including Australia, Canada, Cambodia, Czech Republic, UAE, Italy, Japan, Oman, Korea, Myanmar, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia South Africa, Singapore, Spain, Thailand, US, UK, and Vietnam have attended the festival in the past. Destinations like Joko Valley, Buning Meadows, and the Siroi Hills, about of the Siroi Lili, attract many natural loving tourists from all over the world. Manipur is a home of endangered Shanghai. 
deer. It is habit habitat. The Kaibul Lamzao on the Lok Lake is the world's only floating national park. It is the world's only floating national park. We had witnessed an increasing number of tourism business generated in Manipur in the recent year. The tourist arrival figures in Manipur in the year 2019-20 was around 1.67 lakh domestic tourists arrival and 12,102 foreign tourist arrivals. The figure has dropped due to the COVID pandemic. However, now arrival have started to pick up again. We are promoting the state of Manipur as a preferred tourism destination and have come up with an investor-friendly new tourism policy towards developing an IT industries in Manipur. An IT SEZ special economic zone is being set up for importing international level IT education. Indian Institute of Information Technology, Triple IT, has been set up in Manipur. Manipur government now operate fully on e-office, thus enhancing transparency, transparency and speed in public administration. 5G network has been rolled out in 40 sites of Manipur. Under 4G saturation project, all villages in Manipur will have 4G coverage. Manipur has bought traditional and natural potential for handloom and handicrafts with over 3 lakhs handloom weavers and a 2 lakhs handicrafts artists with over 2 lakhs looms. Manipur is a unique state having the highest concentration of handloom weavers in India. A textile policy has also been promulgated for comprehens to comprehensively address the need of the textile sector. Manipuri Hanlum Hanlum Sari, Manipuri Hanlum Sari, the Sari, known for their fitness, fineness, and the elegant design. Traditional textile fabric, namely Safi Ranpi and the Wanghai Fi, and the Moiran Fi are registered under the geographical indication. We have already got it JIT. My state has 34 recognized tribes. You will enjoy the beauty of the tribe, different dresses, different culture. Tomorrow at uh, Sangai Nikpa, you will be welcomed by the old 34 uh, teams here in the Sangai Nikpa at Mohira. Is with its own traditional art atrius, with unique and diverse motifs. Manipur has huge untapped potential in medical plants, horticultural products aromatic plants and the spices. Local produce like aromatic black rice, pineapples, oranges, ginger, etc. are famous for their unique taste. With soil and the climatic condition very similar to that of Southeast Asia, there are immense scope for investment in post-harvest management of agricultural and the horticultural here. We have already started export of pineapples, gingers, and oranges to the outside country. A place with young and dynamic population, 50% of business registration of, for MSME, micro, small, and medium enterprises in Manipur are for business owned by women. Compared to about 20% for the rest of the country, but for Manipur, 50% is the woman. I must mention that our Nupi Kaitel means Ima Kaitel, women's market, uh, Nupi market, we call it Ima market, is the world's biggest market run entirely by women. To give wing to our pool of talent, Manipur startup scheme was initiated, and the rupees 100 crore has been earmarked as call for fund for Manipur startup 20. Manipur startup scheme. 20 policy 2022 was launched to increase availability of funding avenue for startup. Banser Fund was launched in partnership with NAPI, Nordis Financial uh, Corporation, to increase the guarantee coverage of loans given to micro and small enterprises and the startup 
Manipur Credit Guarantee Scheme is being taken up in collaboration with Credit Guarantee Fund Trust for micro and small enterprises. The fund will be able to provide support to 14,000 MSME and a startup. One of our biggest strength is our English speaking youth, as the speaker has already mentioned earlier also. They, are, they have done extremely well in the service sector, including hospitality, nursing, customer care, computer skills, health and wellness, etc. With more investment in skilling, it will be a win-win situation for investors and our youth. Friends, I'm confident the platform provided by today's event will go a long way to help explore investment and partnership opportunities. Here we will provide insight and a perspective and have force sustainable and enduring partnership for Manipur. Remember, the Nordis will be India's new engines of growth. Before I conclude, I wish all the delegates a comfortable stay in Manipur. Hope you will enjoy the scenic beauty and the cultural di diversity of this land and a take back fond memories. Thank you. Zai Hind. Can I request all the dignitaries on the dais to close into the center of the head table for a group photograph? <laughs> they have been spearheaded by the industries department. At the same time, the tourism department has also come up with the 
uh, new tourism policy, the new government which came into power last year. This was one of the first decisions to be taken. The new industry, the new tourism policy talks about private sector led growth in this uh, sector of hospitality and tourism. As you see, our uh, rich panel of uh, speakers that we are having today, led by the senior most official from the state government, uh, respect Chief Secretary Dr. Rajesh Kumar sir. And then we have subject experts from the field of tourism, medical tourism, information and communication technology, and uh, handloom and textiles. We are all aware that Manipur is a powerhouse when it comes to sports, when it comes to handlooms and textiles. Per capita percentage of weavers and artisans in the state is maximum in the country. For a small, a small state like Manipur where the population is roughly 2.8 million, more than two, we, we, have, we have almost 200,000 weavers who we have uh, already counted. If you happen to go to the stalls down below, the products that are displayed, some of them are already GI tagged. Our Vankhe Fi, the Numbi pottery that we are showing here, all these things already have attained international repute. It's just that we are looking for the right buyer and the right investment. We have proximity to Myanmar. As Honorable CM in his uh, initial address also said that once the road infrastructure is put in place beyond Manipur, outside India. We will be able to reach from here to Bangkok in 16 hours. In the field of tourism, last year we organized our Manipur Sangai festival. That is our calendar event, annual calendar event. Where we had, uh, we also organized an international polo tournament. That 10 day event of Manipur Sangai festival, we had the footfall of 500,000 people. 500,000 spread over 10 days. We organized international polo tournament and as we are speaking, we are also hosting the international women's polo tournament. You are aware that Manipur is the birthplace for polo and tomorrow morning you will be visiting the Marjing Hill where the tallest polo player statue has come up. You all are going to see it tomorrow morning. So we are really unique, we are really gifted, there is peace and people here are really hard working. We have young population in the field of IT, in the field of, uh, field of service uh, industry, tourism, textile and commerce, uh, micro, small and medium uh, industries. We are doing really well. As of now, if you see the figures and the stats, Number wise, we are second only to Assam in the Northeast in terms of performance and the achievement. We have also requested for your convenience today that the various directorates, the head of the departments of various industries, various departments like tourism, handloom and textiles, information communication technology, they are all present here. So if you want to have one to one interactions or if you want to have B2B interactions, for that also we have participation from the local business and local industry. And uh, before we start with the thematic discussions and the thematic uh, uh, presentations by various speakers, I'll request you all to uh, go through the two uh, videos that uh, we are going to present. One is on uh, tourism in the state and other one is about horticulture. That also again is our uh, area of strength. So there also we are already attracting uh, investments from outside the state and uh, there is a scope to uh, do much more than what we already have. So uh, we'll start with the uh, videos and then we'll have presentation. Thank you very much. Get a glimpse of the endangered Sanai deer. Peaceful uphill tracks along the bountiful panoramic view. 
perfume, Suco Valley is home to unique flora and fauna, flaunting beauty with scenic splendor. The mystical lake, called the Lockdown Lake, largest freshwater lake in the Northeast. With the only floating national park in the world, the gods share the enchanting dreams with us. And we can see their overwhelming creation, where we bear witness to the skies kissing the surface. She will hold you in your plight. She will shine upon you the light. Her tranquility will bring forth the best in you. With every touch, with every breath, with every sight, remarkable sight to behold, this land is a credit for celebrating vibrance in diversity. are reflected by the memorials. Konjo War Memorial is one such sacred resting place for warriors who fought in the anglo manipuri battle. The men and women have given everything to this land and in return she has blessed her people with abundance and divinity.
for that very brief welcome. Oh, gentlemen, now allow me to welcome Dr. Kundomba Pali Hospitals and Research Institute for his presentation in general surgery, minimal excess surgery, delegates from outside the country, healthcare and uh, medical tourism, and opportunities, the potential, particularly in Manipur, but I will be presenting the global scenario, the national scenario, and not in India, train, and Manipur specific. Medical tourism is also known as medical value tourism or healthcare tourism. It has been practiced since centuries for healing the mind, body, and spirit. And it is the concept of traveling to a particular destination to avail the opportunity of the best treatment of diseases, cosmetic surgery, and infertility treatment. On the other hand, wellness tourism is to maintain the health and vitality and to prevent the genetic 30% and epigenetic 70% that is lifestyle, lifestyle related. Because it is non-communicable disease is increasing globally. And there are three types of medical traveler, local, domestic and international. As I have already mentioned, Manipur specific, maybe education. Globally, we have seen uh, in the graph that it is steadily increasing in the coming years. Currently, it is projected 127 billion dollar the current year, and it is about to touch double in 2029. That is uh, $237 billion. India is included in the top 10. Brazil, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Czech Republic, Turkey, India, Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia. India has taken over Thailand and Singapore because of the volume. And there is an issue in Turku, Turkey. So, there may be change in the direction of the medical tourism. Why India is emerging as the fastest growing country in medical tourism? Because of the low cost, less waiting time, world class quality, personalized service, and most importantly, rich cultural heritage. And medical tourists are visiting the country, India from 78 countries in a year. They are from Sri Lanka, Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal, Indonesia, Myanmar, Kenya, Australia, China, Russia, UK, and South Asia, and so on. Most of them are going to the metros, that is Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai, Kosi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. Currently, it is $9 billion, and it is projected to be $13 billion by 2026. Uh, of course, it is comparatively less and still uh, lesser or cheaper in Manipur. It is already known. That's, that's the reason why uh, people are coming to India. There is a rebound phenomenon happening after the corona because of the pandemic demand and uh, the inflation increasing cost of treatment in the western countries following COVID. Ukraine war and uh, Turkey national disaster is uh, shaping the medical tourism destination also. 2023 is expected to be booming year for medical tourism in India and expected to grow 21% even more. On the other hand, wellness tourism is more uh, Lucrative in one sense. Currently, it is $814 billion and it is going to touch $1 trillion by 2006, uh, 2026. North America is the capital of wellness currently. Asia Pacific, the fastest growing. India is contributing only 0.25 globally. 
and we are targeting 3 to 4 percent by 2025. And India is promoting a use visa for the promotion of wellness. And the, the current, the, the income from this wellness, mainly from the lodging in country, transport, wellness activities, food and beverage, shopping and others. It is huge. And particularly in northern India, it is bought bordered by four countries. Dribugo was the mecca of healthcare in 1970s. Now Kauhati is the center of healthcare, well connected with the metros in northern India. Uh, they have got the advantage of Bhutan, Bangladesh and Nepal, but I think distance is not the barrier now because of the flight. There is a presence of Apollo, Narayan Health, many private and uh, uh, public hospitals. What it can become the medical health in this region. Mizoram has the advantage of Myanmar, already a uh, lot of patients are coming, Tripura with Bangladesh. Again, Manipur, uh, uh, Manipur is not an exception in the global uh, growth of medical tourism. Medical tourism doesn't happen automatically, we have to plan and design to win. The price, technology, waiting time, everything, we have better position. Natural grief, hills, land, lag, and weather, and uh, we are the gateway of Southeast Asia Nation. This map itself is our strength, bordering with Southeast Asia. Power comes from the consensus of the power within. Last 30 years, we have seen a significant change in healthcare uh, in Manipur, both in public and private. So uh, the trans Highway 1 and 2 passing through Manipur Railhead, already the uh, Honorable Chief Minister has already mentioned, International Airport, four medical colleges, one uh, private medical college, human capital. Uh, we are producing the highest number of nurses uh, in the country, in actual Kerala, and Japan demands uh, for 35,000 nurses from Northern India, especially from Manipur. We have started sending eight out of them after language and cultural training. And for quality, we have to work harder, NAPL, NAPH, and Betrut, Kohima, and Imphal already mentioned. And these are the facilities already available in Manipur, kidney transplant, cornea, liver transplant uh, will be started soon, infertility treatment, cardiac care, joint replacement, in interventional radiology, spine surgery, cosmetic surgery, dental care, eye care, for which people are traveling for the treatment. And we have to promote together with the government of Manipur and private sector held in Manipur, India. And already uh, this medical tourism policy is already approved. I have written to be approved just now. I, have, I come to know from the director of tourism that it is already approved. And in, uh, this healthcare is uh, identified as a trust area. And for quality control, we have to uh, improve the quality. Incentives for the hospital to scatter domestic and international medical tourists, uh, logistic support in terms of roads, power, water, and biomedical waste management and in IT, encourage PPP mode for affordable and quality healthcare. And we need a medical tourism board, including home, health, PWD, tourism, industry, and so on. Need for medical uh, this wellness. Who, World Health Organization has given an alarming statement that India, 63% of the dead are due to non-communicable diseases. And Massachusetts General Hospital and Benson Henry Institute demonstrated that 40% healthcare expenditures can be reduced by doing yoga and meditation. This is very much close to our this uh, country. Modern medicine cannot handle such volume, so we have to incorporate wellness. Scope of collaboration uh, with our delegates, infrastructure deployment, we need substantial uh, deployment in hospital, medical, dental, nursing, paramedical and health management institutes and medical university, knowledge exchange, technology transfer and research, language training for various countries, medical tour operator, manufacturing, medical device, pharmaceutical, local government support for land and logistic, PPP mode, 
Wellness Institute, Global Senior Citizen State, International Marketing for Medical and Wellness Board. To conclude, medical and wellness tourism is a big thing next to IT. Manipur can be one of the leading medical and wellness tourism and it will bring universal brotherhood. Thank you very much. In 2022, for his entrepreneurial skill and order of the Rising Sun, Gold and Silver Rays 2020 from the government of Japan for his contribution to India-Japan relations. Ladies and gentlemen, respected Dr. Dhabli. Good evening to all, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the dignitaries on the dais and the panelists. And thanks to 0.9% of the world's GDP. Quite a significant figure. And it also generates employment to 311 million. That's equivalent to 11.8% of the world's total employment. So in short, we can say that one in every 12 jobs in the world is given by tourism and tourism related activities. Destinations worldwide receive 671 million international tourist arrivals in six months time, January to June 2019. That's just before the start of pandemic COVID-19. And that's the growth by 4% as compared to the same timing in 2018. Again, in India, it's also the country's largest job provider. 79.86 million direct and indirect jobs are provided by tourism and tourism-related activities during the financial year 2020. And it's also projected that there will be like the, the, it, will, it will expand to US dollar 125 billion by 2027, as estimated by Vicky. Rank is somewhere around 24 in the world. How about the North East India? Notice recorded 77.13 lakh domestic tourists visits during 2016. I have the figure for 2016. That's only 0.47% of the total visits. It's a so small as compared to the national figure. 1.38 lakh foreign tourists visited the region during the same year. And that's equivalent to 0.55% of the total. Quite a small figure again. But after 2016, in the subsequent years, there has been increased by 15%. Uh, this is just the, uh, to show the Northeast John map. Uh, we can see that uh, there are seven states colored, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, and Meghalaya. Seven sisters, once it was called. But now we have added another new state that is Sikkim. So we describe it as seven sisters and one brother. The total eight states in the Northeast. Now you can also see in this map that these, all the states are surrounded, almost all states are surrounded by neighboring countries. Sikkim is surrounded by Nepal and Bhutan and China. And then Arunachal Sahid is China, Myanmar, then Bangladesh. So it, this, the entire Nordic states are all surrounded by neighboring countries. And this is another map, India tourism map, showing major tourist destinations in, in the country. And let's focus on Nordist. There are four points marked. Two are the hill stations and two are wildlife and national parks. Gangtok in, in, in uh, Sikkim and Shillong of Meghalaya, the capital, are the hill stations. Already recognized, known with a lot of tourist inflow. And then Kaziranga and Imphal are wildlife and natural park. So what could be the reason why the, the figures in Northeast tourist arrival is so small as compared to the national figure? It could be because of the lack of proper infrastructure, could be because of lack of transportation system, or it could be because of the lack of proper and effective marketing and promotion. So these three may be the root cause, causes of the low footfall of tourists in the Northeast. 
and all these activities require fund and there is insufficient funding could be the root cause and some of the states in notice also require special entry permit known as interline permit and some states requires a special permit to be given by the home ministry why you should visit notice india there are many reasons notice india is a relatively unexplored paradise different cultures different tribes different languages and different foods scenery that are just heaven to the visitors amazing and unique destination and good news is that it's becoming quickly the india's hottest new destination now, india is now focusing on northeast seeing the region's rich cultural heritage incredible landscape and also to tap the huge tourism potential ministry of tourism sanctioned 60 new projects worth rupees 1300 crores equivalent to us dollar 162 million in 2022 last year and this is all for promoting tourism and generate jobs and other opportunities let's come to manipur the figure is so small we have seen everything in big big figures but now domestic tourists arrival in 2019 is 167334 this is the figure provided by the tourism department government of manipur and foreign tourist arrival was 12102 we have seen gradual increase of tourist footfalls both in the domestic as well as the foreign tourists but what is heartening is the foreign tourist arrival is increasing in big numbers 5 6 years back we had around 700 foreign tourists arrival in the whole year you know it has, it has jumped to 12102 that's a very big big figures if it's not the total figure but the percentage increase is very very significant so what are the tourism destination the the, the why should manipur be a tourism destination what we have three factors are to be discussed the connectivity the resources and the hospitality sector these are the three requirements and my task has been to some extent made easier by that video presented at the beginning that has shown all the resources that we have in manipur but let me very quickly go through all those uh, the resources now let's let's talk about the connectivity yes we have road connect connectivity with dimapur we have connectivity with silchar we have connectivity with more and to myanmar these are all national highways and whether the condition of roads are under construction or it's, it's uh, becoming better and better but it's going to take few more years to have the international class of highways air connectivity is good it's all in pal is connected with most of the metro cities delhi kolkata and beyond and in the north east region impal is connected with guwahati silchar agartala shillong dribagar and very recently at teju in arunachal pradesh that means connectivity in the entire north east among the different states have tremendously improved and impal airport is an international airport railways is has been already discussed that uh, we are yet to wait for another 2 years to have it commission yes uh, the rda speaker has also mentioned that transaction highways both one and two are passing through imphal transaction highway number one starts from turkey and ends in japan and number two starts from iran and it, it will end up in indonesia and both the highways are passing through manipur we have various resources let me talk on the cultural natural and wildlife adventure rural and ethnic world war 2 has been already mentioned and sports specifically polo and we also have the flora and fauna in the mountains and if we can combine manipur with other states like manipur combining with nagaland 
or some, that that will make a better circuit for the tourists. So let me go through quickly the pictures, the different festivals that we have in the state, the Chabankut, Holi, Lungaini, these are the major festivals of different tribes staying in Manipur, and there are festivals around the year. Cultural and heritage site, Govindaji Temple is one, then Hanuman Mandi, Kanga is the heritage site. I think it's there in the program that our dignitaries will be visiting, our delegates will be visiting these places. Imakaitel has been already described by our Honorable Chief Minister, that is the human market. Everything is done by the women. And it's one of the biggest women market in Asia. Uh, we have different forms of dances. The Ras Lila, it's quite famous, and then different forms of tribal dances. Pung Cholam is a combination of acrobatics and drumming. Putrail, yes, I think you have to test it to know about the test and about the types. And the presentation will be quite good and it's worth testing. Natural and wildlife sites, Loktak Lake is the biggest freshwater lake in Eastern India. And next to that, Khebur Lamjau is the floating national park. A very unique, there are floating biomass on the water. And it's the, it's the only floating national park in the world. And it's the habitat of Sanai, the brow antler deer. Then we have a lot of adventure sites, adventure, adventure tourism sites. And a few examples are Tanon Cape, and Joko Valley, and Chaduchiru, and a lot more for the trekking purpose. World War II was fought in, in Manipur, and that's described as the Impal battle was described as one of the fiercest battles. And thousands and thousands of the soldiers from Japan, INA, and from the Allied forces lost their lives in this part of the country. In their memory, there, there are Commonwealth War Cemetery, too, and then we have India Peace Memorial and Impact Peace Museum. Games and sports polo. The Manipur is the birthplace of polo that has been mentioned earlier. And every year during the month of November, there are international polo tournament for the men. And this, the, the picture below is the one photograph taken during the match. And currently there is women world's polo tournament going on in Imphal at the moment. And martial art Thanta is becoming popular. It has become a national sports now. And tomorrow our team will be visiting to Ugudo Mazin Kuban, the polo player on the horse. And also Olympian Park that has been recently added. Other tourist spots, INA Memorial Museum and Sanai Ethnic Park, I think again our team will be visiting tomorrow morning. As regards the hill stations, we, we always talk about hill stations. Why Sikkim is so popular, why Shilong is so popular because of the hill stations. Manipur has so many hill stations. Almost all district headquarters are hill stations. We see the Mao, such a beautiful picture. Then Okru, equally beautiful and Tamangong. Churachampur is also a fast developing, almost a full blown city now on a hill station. And Indo Myanmar border, the Moray Tenopol site, is the, is the border with Myanmar. So Manipur has uh, more comparative advantages other than other states in the Northeast. Beautiful hill stations, valley and lake, Manipuri dances, cultural, natural, and ecotourism sites. But place of Polo, World War II sites, and it's easily accessible by air. But still, challenges are there. They, we need to develop the infrastructure, the connectivity, especially road and rail, needs to be improved. The low image of Manipur in the market needs, net, needs to be rectified, and we should go for image building exercises and travel restrictions. This is also hampering the process. And way forward is development of infrastructure and facilities, branding and marketing, image building, capacity building and raising, financial resources, because all these activities will need huge funding. And once you have fund, then we can definitely perform all these activities. 
So coming to the last part, that is the hospitality sector. We have three components in the hospitality sector. That's the hotels, resorts, and homestay. Homestay is also sometimes known as bed and bre breakfasts. And they will provide the accommodation, the fooding, and also entertainment to the visiting tourists. A lot now, there are about 18 bigger hosp the hotels in the capital city, and the total room bay level now is 776 of different categories, star rated and luxury, five in number, and 375 rooms. In total, we have 776 rooms. And other hill districts also have hotels, but they are smaller in size, but number is bigger. But the total number of rooms are only 270. Current demand is around 600 to 700 rooms per night. That means, as of now, we have enough of rooms to meet the demand of the guest. But future, future projection is there. Manipur is growing, Impal is growing. More visitors are coming, and then we need to increase the rooms. And it's, it's expected that in 10 years' time, we will need 1,000 to 1,500 rooms. And in 20 years, we may be requiring around uh, 2,500 to 3,000 rooms. Homestay promotes local food and culture. And normally, there are no applicable taxes and basic skills for hygiene and hospitality need to be provided to them. And there are approximately 30 homestay facilities and resorts in different parts of the state. So to conclude, tourism and hospitality sectors play a crucial role, role in employment generation and economic growth. Northeast India in general, Manipur in particular, have high potentials. There are ample scopes for development of tourism and hospitality infrastructure. And there are immense opportunities for investors to invest in these sectors. Before I conclude, let me again quote St. Augustine's that the world is a book and those who do not travel read only one page. So let us promote travel and tourism. Thank you for your questions.